You may be watching this video because you're just now getting started with resistance bands, or you don't know where to start and you want to learn more about resistance bands. So I made this video to give you the best guide for people who are just getting started with resistance bands. Hi, I'm Discipline Dave, where I put the technique in your physique. Today, we're gonna go over everything you need to know about resistance bands when you're just getting started. So we're gonna begin by talking about the differences of resistance bands out there. There are gonna be a lot of different variations of resistance bands, and so we're just gonna talk about why they are so many different ones, what they're used for, pros and cons. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So the first style is gonna be the tube style. Those are gonna be the most common ones that you're gonna find. These are ones that are circular with handles. So the band has these handles that you can attach and a lot of them you can attach multiple bands. It's not all cases where you can attach multiples, but in most cases you'll find those whether it be on Amazon or in stores and things like that. These are usually the most common you'll see. The reason why people like these bands is because with the handles, they're usually easier on the hands and they're better for mimicking exercises that you typically do with weights in the gym. They're gonna have a lot of stretch length into them. They're usually gonna be a little bit less expensive than some other bands, but those are gonna be the tube style bands. The other ones that you're gonna find most commonly are the loop bands. These are gonna be completely circular. It's less common to see handles with these. But the great thing about the loop style bands is that they usually are great for heavy resistance compound exercises. Now, some of the downfalls when it comes to it is usually the exercises are not gonna be as versatile as the tube style bands because they don't have the handles on them and they have like less linear stretch. Um, that's how much the band can uh, flex before it goes back to its original state but these are also great because of the heavy resistance. They're usually more durable than the tube style bands. So it's great to have those sets also. The third type you'll see most commonly are the mini or short bands, and they're usually gonna be a bit wider um, as far as the band itself, but they're very short. And so a lot of times you see these with leg exercises, whether it be glutes, thighs, booty exercises, stuff like that. And those are also great for those set of them. Now, the thing we wanna remember the most about the bands are no band is gonna be really better than the other one. It just depends on the exercises that you're doing. Um, I recommend that you have all these different types of bands so it doesn't limit what you can do at home to really maximize either if you're trying to lose weight gain muscle, or you're just trying to, you know, just try to drop some body fat. So I would recommend that all these bands, they definitely are tools that you're gonna use. Cause when it comes to using resistance bands, you have to look at them as tools. What is the best tool for the job? Like you wouldn't bring a flathead screwdriver to something that's a Phillips head, but you wanna make sure that you have the right tool for the exercise. So that's how you have to look at resistance bands. Not just this one set is a one size fit all. Some things are gonna be better for tube bands, some are gonna be better for loop bands, and some are gonna be better for those mini short bands. But you need to make sure you have the right tool for the exercise. Next, we're gonna talk about attachments for resistance bands. I highly recommend that you get various attachments to get the maximum amount of what you need to do as far as those tools to make sure you're doing them great for those exercises. So when it comes to attachments, one of the most common things you're gonna see are handles. So now earlier, if you were listening to the video, I talked about how loop style typically doesn't come with handles and I mean, typically, but there are some type of things as far as accessories that you can find on Amazon or certain websites that sell the bands there where you can attach handles to them. I just find that most people feel comfortable when they're using tube style with handles because it has a better feel for the band and those bands have more stretch. Now, the other common thing that you're gonna find are door anchors. So door anchors are something that usually come with the bands and this is where you can have an anchor point on a door that you can use um, to, in order to get more versatility in the exercises and have something where it can be, 
um, anchored or held to. I try not to use the definition of a word of using the same word of uh, what it, the meaning is to it. So we just want to make sure that we have something that is a point where the band can pull from, which is going to give you really good resistance. So having door anchors is something I find essential when it comes to bands. Now, there's some people out there who don't have, because of where their house is, where the layout is, where they can't use a door anchor, or the stretch of where you're going is just not enough distance between a wall or something, or you just don't have a door, period. So there's some companies out there like Undersun where they come with um, a door anchor that you can actually strap around a pole, a tree if you're going outside, which gives you even more versatility. So that's another good exercise that you can use. In addition, there's also things that um, I really like that take you to the next level. It's like an ultra door anchor where you have various points where you strap this whole uh, system to a door and you have all these different anchor points because when you do have the one that usually comes in the bag, you have to put it at different spots in the door by opening it and closing it and putting it in a different spot. And sometimes that can be a little frustrating to constantly always move the door anchor. So they sell things like these ultra door anchors. Here's one by Body Elastics where you can have different anchor points so you don't have to keep moving and opening and closing the door when it comes to that door anchor. Now, if you're one of those people that really wants to take it to the next level, one a great accessory that you can use, and these are two accessories, but either one should be fine, um, is having a curl bar or some type of straight bar. So a curl bar is very good when you're using different things when it comes to working out. Uh, Body Laxis has a great one. There's some other companies out there. And then there's also a straight bar. And a straight bar, I find that a lot of people like the ones by uh, X3. Um, they do a lot of advertising on that bar and they actually use those with the loop style bands, those ones with the more resistance on there. So all these accessories are just additional tools to help you be able to reach your full potential through your workouts. So now we know about the equipment, why would we use resistance bands? I'm a big believer in resistance bands because for one, I'm all about making sure we have the most effective workout, the most efficient and the fastest way to do it. And I know you've probably heard about using weights a lot, but the problem with weights is you're constantly using gravity and that gravity changes based on different positions that you're using that weight. And for example, when you're doing like an arm curl, one of the things is that once you get it to a certain point where it be past midline, the exercise becomes easier and you're just kind of like resting your arm up there at the top once you reach the top there. But versus when you have a resistance band, it's pulling you. So when you're coming up more and more with that arm curl, it actually gets more difficult at the top and that's where you want to have the most resistance. So it's actually a lot better than using weights because you have something pull it against you and you're not really just relying on gravity. It actually gets more difficult as you stretch the band. Now, if you watch my channel, as you see that my channel is all dedicated to resistance bands and I do a ton of workouts on there. And one of the things I promote the most is using great technique and great form. And so that's the great thing about resistance bands is that it's gonna force you to use better form because you can really do a lot of swinging and rocking when it comes to weights to, to really just hoist weights up to you. Um, but with resistance bands, because something is pulling you back, it forces you to have your form corrected. And I'm not saying that weights are bad, but most people are doing improper form, which really hinders their progress. So if you're looking to get faster results, I highly recommend using resistance bands. Now, if you're new to resistance bands, you may be wondering, how do I add more weight or resistance in this case to make sure that when you're progressing, that you can actually provide more resistance? Well, the great thing about resistance bands are you can really change that various weight very quickly. There's a lot of times in the gym that you feel more energetic than sometimes than you do in the other times. And so when it comes to using resistance bands, you can make these little quick changes very easily. So let's say if you have a door anchor and you're doing an exercise, 
you can actually step forward or step backwards to increase or decrease resistance right on the fly. Because the more the band stretches, it's like you're just adding more weight to plates like when it comes to using uh, weights at the gym. So that's the great thing about resistance bands is that you can increase or decrease resistance right on the fly. There's other ways that you can do that too. Whether it be using like a loop band you can do certain things by making your stance wider with the band stretcher and making it more narrow to add more or reduce resistance on there. In addition, when it comes to tube style bands, you can actually add more and more bands to get even more of the resistance there. So not only do you move your body, you can actually add more bands for more resistance. Now let's talk about some things you don't want to do with bands that you may be used to when it comes to using weights. One thing is that you don't really want to pay attention to the numbers. And when I say the numbers is that you kind of have in your mentality and weights that I curl with 25 pounds, I'm going to increase by five pounds with 30. And what most people do is they try to match the weights at the gym with the ones in the bands. And it doesn't really work that way. So because of the stretch was adding more resistance or reducing them, that weight is actually varying. Um, I actually have an example of some bands that I recommend in the past that have technology in there that show you how the resistance changes when you're using the exercise. But even with that, I would say that you don't even want to pay attention to the numbers. You don't want to even pay attention to the numbers onto the bands. I'm not sponsored by anybody making this video. I'm just letting you know that pretty much all those numbers that are on the bands are always going to be off compared to the ones that you're using at the gym. So when you're using resistance bands, you're really going to have to go off of the feel of it. You have to really understand how the body is functioning. And so when it comes to doing like sets and reps in a lot of my workout videos, I recommend sets and reps, but that's just the guy, not the rule. So if there's a video that you see where it's about eight to 10 reps, what you want to do with the band is in perfect form you want to make sure that you can make it to eight and then when it gets closer to 12 you can't get past 12. that's a good way to gauge the right resistance for you so i want you to think about that when you're doing those exercises if you can easily get to that 12 number in perfect form and keep in mind in perfect form then now it's time to go up in resistance but if you're using a, a lot of momentum and you're not really doing it in good form, you can't get to eight, it's time to reduce that resistance or make less linear stretch in those bands. Now what you do wanna do with resistance bands is that I find it better to use a higher resistance in great form than to do a lower resistance and you have a lot of what we call cheat reps where you're starting off in good form but it starts to teeter off and you're just trying to get through the exercise. So with resistance bands, you will have to do higher repetitions. In most exercises, I recommend around 15 reps, but with that, you're gonna tear muscle fibers very well with that. And you're also gonna get a bit of a cardio workout when doing that. So just make sure that you're using high repetition, you're using great form, you're going off that feel that I was talking about there, and you're using the right tools for the exercise. And speaking of right tools, I want you to go ahead and click. I have two videos up for you that you can go ahead and check out. One is a review of the top resistance bands that I tried out. So you wanna go ahead and click that video. And another one is some of my favorite bands that I like to use in most of my workout videos. So go ahead and check those out. So go ahead and get you a good set of bands and go ahead and work out.